Daniel chapter 6, verses 1 to 28. Let us read this in unison. Are you there, Paul? Daniel chapter 6, verses um, 1 to 28. Brother Day, could you please help me to hypnotize? Yeah, please hypnotize. Please wait for a moment. Thank you. Okay. Daniel chapter 6, verses 1 to 28. Verse 1, everybody please read. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom an hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over his three princes, of whom Daniel was the first, and that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king, and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents and kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that ye be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows opened in the chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Okay, let us stop there. Let us pray. Our loving Father, thank you once again, Lord God, for gathering us once again this morning to study your word. I pray, Father, that you will uh, continue to help us to understand your word. Holy Spirit, be the one to be in our midst this morning. Thank you so much, Lord God, for all the things that you've done, for your faithfulness in our lives. This bless me as well, Lord God, as I teach your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. So a very familiar chapter, and this is one of the, uh, I would say, notable uh, Bible stories in the Bible, amen? And when I was still a kid, uh, I usually uh, hear this uh, story from time to time, until now I'm still a kid, you know? See, I don't have... Uh, Hairs anymore. But again, here in our study, so we'll be studying this morning about the topic of uh, the message entitled Faithful Until the End. So, in this uh, chapter, Darius the Mid here, uh, don't be confused about Darius the First, because uh, Darius uh, might be used as a title of the king uh, during the Medes and the Persian uh, Empire uh, uh, in the ancient time. But he ruled Persia from uh, 522 to 486 BC. And uh, during his reign also, okay, the temple was restored by the Jewish uh, remnant at uh, Jerusalem. So, again, Darius the Mede here was probably a name or just a title or the man uh, King Cyrus appointed ruler here of the city of Babylon here in chapter 9 verse 1 so as is often here after the conquest of course the new ruler will uh, take over the kingdom and also the new ruler wants to reorganize the government yeah, on the conquered kingdom 
to establish his authority, to establish also his rule, and make things to conform to his own leadership goals. But when uh, King Darius reorganized the kingdom of Babylon, he noticed that uh, most of those uh, governors, most, most of those uh, leaders that, he, uh, that was appointed on those uh, positions were uh, uh, corrupt. So, these people were only concerned of their uh, uh, own profit. So, he decided to uh, reorganize his kingdom and uh, he found Daniel, one of the faithful uh, Jewish uh, uh, exile, and uh, placed him as the uh, leader or the uh, chief of those uh, leaders in his uh, kingdom. You have to understand that uh, here, as often, you know, according to uh, some theologians, at the age of 80 years old, uh, I think he could no longer uh, really uh, go to different places to uh, do his duty. But again, here in this uh, book, we can see that uh, Daniel was still uh, very effective in his work and his job. No? He was really faithful. So today, okay, wherever you find dedicated the believers living and working with unbelievers, so you will see the same forces at work. And also, that are described in this chapter, whether here in families, whether all in churches, corporations, or governments. But ne never, but da Daniel never made a big splash in Babylon. No? Though he was continually being promoted through the ranks of government, arriving in that higher position, we have to understand that the Jews were still in captivity in Babylon. The new king, by the name of Darius, who is probably also known as Cyrus, allows the Jews to return back to Jerusalem to build the temple there. Yet most of the exiles during those days choose to stay in Babylon and adopted that culture in that place or the lifestyle. So after all of those years, we can see that be, he, uh, the uh, empire of Babylon was influenced by God's people. But here, Babylon was unchanged. They didn't change. No? The, the, the rulers have changed here, but they were still idolatrous people. Idolatrous people, cruel, uh, cruel people, and wicked people. There have been no great revivals in Babylon while Daniel was there because most probably, most of those people there who are looking to him didn't really admire his leadership. No, that is the problem. Why? Because these people are not saved. No. It seems that all his faithfulness to God was to draw the jealousy of his peers. Now we can see that in a, in a study later on. The hatred and the ungodly and a plot in his life and the death sentence by uh, throwing him in the dens of lions. Or in the lion's den, I mean. So, but through it all, praise the Lord, Daniel remained faithful. Faithful until the end. He remained faithful in spite of the changes going on around him. And that would be very interesting. Uh, most of the time, you may say, it's very disastrous. We, you've been surrounded by unbelievers, but you still uh, you have to remain faithful in serving the Lord. Daniel was a faithful man, yet he found himself in a terrible cellar during this time. So in this passage, we can see here, Daniel was cast into the lion's den. He was sentenced to die for doing nothing than being faithful to God. And that's really hard. Oh, if you're going to read the uh, Faxas books of martyrs, then you can see those uh, Christians who were persecuted by uh, Catholics and Protestants. But again, they remained faithful until the end. Now, faithful until the end. Now let us see here in verses 1 to 9, Daniel's quality. Now the Bible tells us here, 
it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom an hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. We have to understand that uh, Darius will not be able to uh, control the whole kingdom by his own. Okay? He needs subjects to help him okay, manage the whole kingdom. And in verse 2, and over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Now point number one, Daniel's quality. Now here in verses 1 to 3, we can see here in his position. Now, as what I've said to you a while ago, uh, Darius noticed that most of his... Uh, uh, subjects were corrupt. So he suspected that the officers had inherited uh, something uh, that did not actually uh, do their work properly. They were not faithful, but they were robbing him the wealth. And his, versus, uh, and his uh, uh, suspicions here were correct. So here, as all I've said, because of that uh, thing, he placed Daniel as the head of these leaders. He appointed 120 princes to rule his kingdom. So these men helped him uh, ensure that his kingdom were protected from everything. From military revolts or tax evasions, from thefts and everything. And these men ruled over specific provinces of that kingdom. Who ruled with Darius, as also known as vice regents here. Over all that was Daniel who answered directly to the king. It was amazing, amen. What's amazing here is that the fact that Daniel was a slave, he was uh, brought to Babylon as a young man, uh, he, he was enslaved there, and again taken from his so many people, but he was trained in the ways of the Babylonian court. That was a blessing. That was his position here. He has been faithful to God. And God blessed Daniel's faithfulness. Amen. You know, that that's the only thing that we can do. To be faithful to our God until the end. Amen. Causing Daniel to find favor with every pagan king he served. Take note of that. Every, the, the leaders might change, but their favor... Yeah, well, the favor of Daniel was there because of his faithfulness. Do you think we can do that these days? Why? Because we have to understand that God honors faithful service. God honors faithful service. We may not uh, be uh, uh, approved by men or people around us, but if we know that we're doing the will of God, and if we know that we are faithful to His work, we're faithful to His service until the end, then God will bless you. He may never promote you in the eyes of men, but He sees everything you do for Him. This is the most important thing. Why? God keeps perfect records. That one day you will be rewarded accordingly. Now we can see that in Revelation 22 verse 12. Let us read Psalms 40 verse 8 please. I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. This is position. Amen. Point number two, another thing here. His position but also his dilemma. You know, problems are everywhere. You cannot really escape from that. No. That's part of our life. I remember uh, during that uh, rhetorical contest that we had before. Okay. Okay. What's the title of the uh, rhetorical con uh, piece that I had a while ago? Uh, before? Could you still remember that? The problem. The problem. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. I forgot. But again, that was a good piece. But I did not win. But again, here in verses 4 to 9, we can see here 
Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault. Amen? But again, let me clarify. Everybody makes mistakes. No, no. We can always do that. You really cannot say that. <laughs> I don't have mistakes in my life. <laughs> no, you're making a joke. Neither was there any error or fault found in him. That was the blessing in his life. But again here, the rulers of the kingdom were jealous of Daniel. I, try to imagine. They, he belongs to a uh, people that were captives. Okay? Because uh, Babylon uh, conquered the uh, country of uh, Jerusalem. But again, when Daniel arrived in the kingdom, the king placed him in the highest position. So that's normal. That they became jealous to Daniel. But again, it's abnormal if that would be the attitude of some of the believers nowadays. Oh? Diba? Bakit siya? Doon sa Florida one. Yeah, tigil na natin yan. So after all, he was a Hebrew and a slave. And they were Babylonians. So they should have, they should have to bow down or give respect unto Daniel. Knowing that these people were also uh, uh, thinking of themselves as higher pe people or, or as higher being compared to Daniel. So they played here, uh, they played to the vanity of the king in verses 6 to 9. Only we can see that. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents and the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of the O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Verse 8. Now, O king, establish the, the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which uttereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Of course, King Darius was pleased. Yes, nobody will pray to their gods for around 30 days except for me. But again, this tells us, it tells us that they devised a plan to get Darius to make a law that no one could pray to any other God or even make a request for 30 days. So that's, what their, uh, that's their plot. So the king liked this none of that. It was to place him at the center of everyone's thought. But we have to understand that in our lives, the center must be God, not ourselves. Now, once you are ig now exalting yourselves above all of these things, rather than God in your life, then that's the start that you will fall. Why? Only God must be exalted. Amen. If you start to think about it, the law utterly ab is absurd. Take note. In verse 7, save thee, O king. Yet we can, yes, we can understand because in the oriental kingdoms, okay, their kings were also considered as gods. Yes, of course, these are pagan nations. People uh, are worshipping them. Of course, in North Korea as well. But again, we have to understand that Darius signed it because it fed his pride and stroked his ego here. He really liked it. You know, there's a saying that flattering is 
manipulation. His dilemma. There's a problem here. But again, it's certainly a commendable thing when people possess this uh, character so impeccable or that they can't be accused of doing wrong except in matters relating to their faith. Yes, that's really hard. To look at here, the conniving officers could never tempt Daniel to do anything illegal, but they could attempt to make these faithful religious practices illegal. Oh, even in China right now, and Russia, okay, most of the missionaries were already uh, taken off from their country. They're now closing doors for the gospel. But again here, Daniel didn't hide the fact that he prayed in his home three times a day with his windows open facing towards Jerusalem. Here in verse 10, we can see that. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a four time. And his enemies knew this. That's why Daniel's dilemma was that he was faithful to the Lord. And to the unbelievers around him who hated him so much. That despised him because he was different, he was honest, and he was real. That what Daniel was everything they could be. And they could not stand him because of it. That's why they devised a plan. They devised a plan to get rid of him. So that's really sad. Right? Those people who are making those devices just to destroy other people for their own sake. It's really devastating. And really absurd. Do you think you can gain something good? Okay, devising uh, something to other people. Do you think you can gain something that will make you better? I don't think so. You might as well know that if you are going to live for the Lord, some people around you may not going to like it. They will not like it. Here comes again a Christian uh, carrying his Bible, bringing his Bible, going to church. Oh, no. You have to be with us. So you, those who do not know the Lord will always look for ways to attack those who are faithful in Him. But it will be a worse thing if believers will attack other believers thus for their own good. It's really sick. There's a dilemma. But in Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 to 36, Sister Milka, please. This is how Jesus said it would be. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and, his, and the daughter, against his mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Also, Paul warns us that persecution would allow, would follow the faithful. So that's normal. No. I experienced that teaching uh, I think Bible studies in the Philippines. Okay. Others may tend to uh, uh, stop us doing Bible study. Because they said, we already have our own religion. But again, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, persecution would follow the faithful. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ, Jesus shall suffer persecution. So let them do what they will. They can do that. 
Let them hate us. Take note that we still love these people. We care for them. Let them fight for us and let them try to silence us. But regardless of what they do, let us determine in our hearts that we will do like Daniel and remain faithful until the end. It's a very important thing. Not only his dilemma, but also his pureness. I like this verse. Let's go back to verses 3 to 5. Then this Daniel was preferred above the princess and uh, pre- uh, presidents and princess because of an excellent spirit who was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Another thing here, his pureness. That's why the Bible tells us that Darius promoted Daniel because he found out, okay, Daniel possessed was that an excellent spirit. The word excellent simply means preeminent. So Daniel has a spirit in him that set him apart from everyone else around him. That was Daniel. Beyond that, when the other presidents of the kingdom wanted to find some deficiency in Daniel that they might attack, they could find nothing wrong in his life. Verse 4, then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion or fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. That was Daniel. I am not Daniel. You can see a lot of mistakes in my life, or faults or error or mistakes in my life, but it doesn't mean that I will stop there because I can hear negative things from other people hey be faithful until the end be faithful until the end there were no skeletons in his closet and there was nothing hidden in his life he was an open book Daniel was faithful and faultless That was his testimony among the lost. They could find nothing wrong in his life. That's why when they could find no sin or secrets in his life, that they exploit something here, exploited something here in verse 5. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. No. It tells us that the only recourse, recourse they, they had was to try to find some way to use faithfulness to God against him. Yeah. Worst people. So. They knew that Daniel was a man of prayer, so they moved their eyes to a low prayer for 30 days. So they knew that Daniel would pray anyway, so they saw that as their uh, opportunity to have Daniel executed, that was also the time that they were counting on. And they were not disappointed. They said, okay, we can use his prayer. They're revising plans. You know, that's the enemy. Take note, he mastered... With those uh, deceitfulness, if you listen to uh, the message that Pastor Joel shared last time, deceitfulness of the enemies, thousands of years. That's why we have to be very careful. He will do everything just to destroy every one of us. Knowing that you will be used mightily for His glory and for His work, then He will do something just to pull you out from the presence of God. That's His motive. That's his plans. That's the plan of God. But again, God is faithful. He will not allow that his children will be uh, out from the course that he, is prepared, uh, he, that he prepared for us. Take note, King Darius must have been impressed 
when those 122 uh, uh, government officials were uh, uh, assembled in front of him, okay, in, assembled in his throne to have audience with him, he was impressed, thinking that these people were united to do something good for his kingdom, but actually no. Of course, Daniel wasn't there. Even though he was the chief among the governors in that land. But again, the leaders had been careful not to include him. However, they deceptively what, included him in their speech. Oh. We've encountered this kind of people many times in our lives. Oh. We have to be very careful. But again, it's really sad. But again, the pureness that we can see in the life of Daniel was there. Oh. The men who watched the plot probably had not consulted with the lesser officers actually. They were just the one okay, who made those uh, uh, decree. But again, this is worse. These officers weren't, li weren't likely to disagree with the plan. Anything that pleased the king would only strengthen their positions. Take note that there, there's every evidence that derives love and appreciated Daniel. But in haste here, okay, the king had put his friend in peril. Of course, oh, for 30 days, nobody will pray to their God except for me. I like that. I know it's normal sometimes that people uh, will really use flattering words to other people. No? Wow, you're good. I like you so much. But behind, they will say something against you. But again, pureness in the life of da Daniel. That is why it has been said that flattery is manipulation, not communication. Flattery is manipulation, not communication. That's why in his pride, I'm talking about Darius, he succumbed to the flattery of evil men. Let's uh, read Psalms 5 verse 9. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Okay, let's proceed to point number two. Verses 10 to 11. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house. And his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he did a fourth time. In verse 11, Then the, uh, these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making a supplication before his God. Point number two, Daniel's choices. So here, when the decree was signed, Okay. Daniel faced with a choice. Should he remain to, uh, to be faithful and pray and kneel down to God? Or would he regard just for 30 days, just for his own safety? Okay. Now, watching Daniel face, uh, Daniel's, Daniel's face in this crisis, uh, I can figure it out. But again, you get the impression that it was not a crisis at him, uh, at all for him. Why? As what I've said, to the believers, we have to expect that problems and persecutions will always come our way. We will always encounter this along the way. Daniel simply did what he had always done. He remained faithful to the Lord. Now, notice Daniel faced the cho the, these choices. 
before him. Here, he chose obedience to God over opportunities in the world. I like that, amen? He chose obedience to God over opportunities in the world. Daniel did not open the windows, they, the, the, the windows to draw attention to himself as he prayed. But again, the windows were already opened. Amen? All Daniel uh, did was bow down before the Lord and pray. Amen? Daniel could simply close those doors so that nobody can notice him while he was kneeling down and pray. But again, when he entered inside his room, the doors were already opened. He chose obedience to God over opportunities in the world. Amen? It was the Lord's will for Daniel to be faithful. And that's what he did. Now how about us guys? Can we do this? He bowed down toward Jerusalem because God promised to hear the prayers of the exiles who faced toward his house when they prayed. As what I've said to you a while ago, he did not close the doors to hide what he was doing because he was not ashamed of his faith, faith towards the Lord. Amen. Well, he could simply just say, lie down. Oh, Daniel, what are you doing? No, I'm sleeping. He can do any uh, thing he could just to escape from these persecutions, but he chose obedience to God over opportunities in the world. Another thing, he chose faithfulness to God over the favor of the king. No? For Daniel, the decree of Darius changed nothing. Amen. That's why I praise the Lord. During the pandemic, we were able to continue our worship here for the Lord. While other countries all around the world, they weren't able to do that. But we continued by the grace of God. He chose faithfulness to God over the favor of the king. He, sim he simply went before the Lord and prayed and gave thanks to him three times a day. How about us? How many times do we pray? I just say, might say three times also, Brother Wilson. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> <And> snacks. <laughs> and snacks. <laughs> uh, four times. Well, again, we're not talking here about how many hours do you really pray, but God is looking. Are watching our faithfulness towards Him. That's really true. Okay. The Bible tells us, as He did a four time, so He remained faithful in spite of the will of the King. Now I, I can't finish this, but uh, we're almost done. Uh, I mean, the time is almost. Uh, I can see the coffee in your eyes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Another thing, he chose devotion to God over the decree of the king. He chose devotion to God over the decree of the king. So the decree was only for 30 days. So for many, they could have simply not prayed for that period of time. <laughs> right? Others might not do that, or some of us might do that. But again, not Daniel. Not Daniel. His faith in the Lord would not allow him to be anything less than what the Lord wanted him to be. Even for a mere uh, 30 days. Another thing, he chose bowing before God than bowing before his enemies. So here in verse 4, as we go back here, verse 4. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion or fault. 
For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. So again, the desire of Daniel's enemies was to what? Bring him down. No? So we can imagine what they could have left him alone. Okay? If Daniel would have adopted the ways and the religions of, the, of, the, uh, uh, I mean of Babylon. But Daniel refused to bow to their will. But he chose instead to remain faithful to God. Amen? He can simply say, David can simply, uh, I mean Daniel can simply uh, follow these people just for the sake of his position. He can simply do that. Actually, I am not uh, really faithful to that uh, idol. But of course, for the sake of my job or my position, I will do this. No. Daniel did not uh, did not do that. Another thing, he chose a faithful testimony over fleeting treasures. You know, for Daniel, prayer was more important than popularity. Amen? Yeah. But others, uh, sad to say, uh, nowadays, people wanted to be in the limelight. They wanted to be in the spotlight. They wanted to be at the center. And they wanted to exalt themselves rather than God in their lives. But I don't also understand why these people uh, tried to uh, uh, pamper them. They tried to cheer these people, exalt them themselves rather than God. What a shame. He would rather be found faithful than in, to enjoy the power popularity and wealth that could have been his for him if he compromised. He can simply do that. But again, he chose a faithful testimony over fleeting treasures. Another thing, he chose commitment over compromise. He chose commitment over compromise. So, consider for a moment the excuses Daniel could have made for not praying. And that's only for 30, uh, for 30 days. Again, you might say, oh, you're already old, Daniel. Eight years old. Just uh, compromise a bit. Just follow the order of the king. I believe Daniel was really, really tired. But again, he was the prime minister of Babylon, so he was busy. But again, yet Daniel did not make excuses. He remained faithful to the Lord and did what he knew was right. That's why just do your best. Don't care what other people might say against you. Go on, move on. Amen? Don't stay in that corner. Don't let those people pressure you. Don't let those people manipulate you. Continue and move on for the Lord. That's what we need. Amen? Hey, we're doing this for the Lord, not for ourselves. Another thing, he chose faithfulness over freedom. He chose faithfulness over freedom. So Daniel was willing to give up his position, his wealth, and his power, but he was not willing to give up his faithfulness or his commitment to the Lord. Amen. That's why, you know, last Sunday when uh, we had the service at Queen's Village, we were really happy seeing those people there. You know what? Uh, seeing them, okay, Listening to the word of God. I was really, really happy. During the time. You know. You know let's remain faithful to the Lord. Okay. The fruit might uh, take long. But again. Let us be faithful in our job, in our duty. Then later on we can see the fruit. Again, it takes time. It's not easy here in Cambodia. But it doesn't mean that we are going to give up. 
Let's continue to be faithful. Another thing, he chose love over life. We're almost done. Two minutes more. He chose love over life. So he was willing to sacrifice his life because he lived his Lord more than he loved himself. And another thing, he chose character over comfort. He chose character over comfort. So Daniel was willing to die a horrible death okay, in a, the lion's den, but he would not sacrifice his character. You know, I will finish this uh, next meeting. But again, the message is already there in the title. It's very simple. Be faithful until the end. Why? Our God is always faithful to us. Shall we all stand and pray?